I'm doing great. I had an interesting uh, podium session with Jordan Mason the other day, where he said that you two didn't hit it off right away. That, that, was, that, that was his perception. That was his perception. What, what was your perception of when he first got here? Was he just trying to take it all in, or what? Uh, since he told you, <laughs> <laughs> he told you we were not on the same page. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. He was. Yeah. He said he, he, he said he didn't know the answers in the meetings. Yeah. He said he he said he needed to grow up. That's yeah, what he yeah. said. That's what he said. That's okay. That's uh, when it comes down to it, yeah. He, mm -hmm. he needed to grow up, become a, a pro. Yeah. And, and uh, so that all involves me just becoming a pro, mm -hmm. and, you know, not knowing what's expected of you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very de detailed, very demanding, not that other coaches aren't. Mm -hmm. um, but not only uh, answering, but I want the correct answer, mm -hmm. you know, et cetera. And so, um, so when he says we didn't hit it off, it, was, it wasn't like, personality and mm -hmm. such yes i wasn't happy with the results and uh, mm -hmm. obviously uh, we are now yeah but that the bottom line is he grew up mm -hmm. and learned how to become a pro he uh talked to us about how he he'd spent three grand to get a jugs machine and work on his receiving and stuff in the offseason he had his dad shooting him footballs have you seen him pick up in his area in, in that area for him oh no doubt no yeah. doubt he improved and that that was an area that he wanted to become better at. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we want him to become better at. And the more you can do, uh, obviously, you're going to help the 49ers mm -hmm. and itself. Cody Schrader was a walk-on, uh, and, and it's became he became a first-team All-SEC running back. And he's looked pretty good to me in this camp. But what's he looking like to you? I'm, I'm, I am happy with Cody. Uh, but I expected to, to feel that way, and I'm happy that you see it and feel that way. So we have great expectations for Cody. How involved were you with the scouting process of Cody bringing him in in the first place? Um, I was definitely in the hunt, and I definitely was involved. Okay. How important are the preseason games for evaluation for your position, just because you're not tackling live to the ground in practice, but you're going to get to see running backs actually try to break some tackles? Is, is that a big eval point? That's huge. That's huge. Practicing in you know in pads and, and obviously game experience, they can do it in the in the classroom and uh, you know without the pads. Even though we're practicing fast uh, assignments, etc., but with the pads on for a running back, uh, it's a must. So that's going to be huge not only for for Cody but for all of our running backs that would be involved in playing in the preseason games. One of the other things Jordan was talking about was how he's. He's like, hey, I sit next to Christian McCaffrey every day, and I ask him so many questions, I think he's going to tell me to, to shut up at some point. But how big is that to have that guy in the room, the way he works, or to have, I guess, Jordan, but the rest of the backs sort of follow, in, fall well, into that? That You know, that's priceless. Yeah. You know, but I expect that. I want. Uh, I love our room. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Ken, uh, Christian is uh, unbelievable. Uh, not only football, total, he is a football player, but, I mean, his personality, his character. Uh, and he's not, he still wants to be the best, okay? So he's looking to improve every day. Every day he's taking notes. I mean, he writes down notes. So not only is he listening, okay, but he also writes down. And writing crystallizes your thinking. Okay, we all learn differently. And yes, Jordan sits next to him. And one of the areas, um, not only one area, but uh, when I talk to Jordan man to man, how can we get better? How can we improve? How can you improve? improve okay and he used Christian because Christian is a complete ball player it means he can do everything not only with the ball in his hands without the ball faking blocking all of that's a must okay that's being a pro and that's the area that we talked about earlier about uh, Jordan needing to improve and I wanted him to improve in that area uh -huh. so yes he does he does watch when you have uh, a young player Christian. who doesn't quite understand what it takes to be a pro how much can you do to help him grow, and how much does it just have to be within him? I'm sorry, we, we, what did you, what was, when repeat you have a young, that again, please? When you have a young player who doesn't understand what it takes to be a pro, how much can you do as a coach to help him grow, and how much does he have to understand it within himself? How much does he have to figure out on his own? Well, number one is, number one is being real and being, uh, you know, truthful with him, with, mm -hmm. you know, with the player. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so many times, and the game's, the game's faster, but uh, everyone's different, everyone learns different. Uh, but number one is for me is just being real and letting the player know what's expected of him and what I expect of him. And then the rest of it is now it, now he has to jump in there and attitude. Okay, he needs to want to change. Okay, because uh, you know I can.
demanded and talked to him about it daily and daily, daily, daily. But until he is willing to change, and when we talk about Jordan, that was the deal. He was willing to change later to get better results. Coach, what, what do you think of Garendo? He was a high school wide receiver. He didn't play a lot in college. He had an amazing final bowl game. He looks like a fullback to me, but what do you, what, he's wearing a fullback number. What do you think of Garendo? Well, uh, uh, don't let that number uh, deceive you, but uh, I know where you're coming from. I've had quite a, uh, I've had a few backs wear that, you know, wear that number. Uh, the number he really wants, uh, the key thing is that he has a number and that he's here. Right. Okay, so I don't even worry about that, about that number. Uh, my job is, our job is as a coaching staff, and my individual job is to get him ready, uh, you know, to play, to learn the system. Um, and to build that confidence, you know, uh, constantly talk about it. And once the player gains confidence, you know, then the sky's the limit for him. And so he has the physical tools, okay? And, and as you said, he was a receiver, but there's quite a few players in the league that play different positions, okay? He's a running back, okay? And I want him playing with that running back attitude, that mentality of being fierce, being a competitor, uh, being nasty between the lines. Uh, being able to, quote, be a complete back, meaning obviously not only as a runner or receiver, blocking whatever it takes. And so he has a great attitude. He has the ability to learn, and, he want, and the key thing is he wants to do it. You could see uh, when he hurt his hamstring, like right away, how upset he was. To every, everybody could see how, how, how mad he was that he got hurt. Kind of, you know, it's like, I just got out here and look what happened. Right. How, when a guy's a rookie and something like that happens to him, what, what's your advice to him? Or what is it, how do you kind of talk him down? Not to keep, uh, uh, the key thing is so they don't go in the tank. You don't, you don't, you don't lose them because it is discouraging. And it was a big letdown. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, my, the first things came out of my mouth was it's a temporary setback. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mentally have to stay positive and get yourself, uh, you know, ready to go. And then, and then when your number is called again, you don't go after it.